is Saturday 9th of July and it's 7 o'clock in the morning because the days are so hot and this is particular sort of temperature and sun trap I wouldn't be able to do <laughs> this video any other time I don't think so <clears throat> today is the time or for our monthly allotment tour and that makes me very excited so let's just have a look how the allotment has changed within the last four weeks. We are here in the sort of newer part of the allotment, which has been in existence only for about a second, partially for a second summer, partially first time. Um, and the um, space which we're using for the first time, and I've used that, done that before, is the potatoes. So we're currently harvesting the first early still and I've got three rows of first early so that's Sharpies Express then the th just about here is uh, some Swift and then we have Charlotte still flowering in pink and these are um, pink fair apple we just started to flower now it's quite much taller um, you can see these are definitely ready to harvest they're kind of lying down now where we have been harvesting oh let's have a look Nigel is coming he's just fed the horse and he's taking water for the rest of his morning walk so I just tagged tag on and sort of walked with him today have a lovely rest of the walk and hopefully we, we say goodbye later on so we've harvested some of these potatoes now and I tried to put some corn in but it's been eaten by rabbits. Um, we fenced it off. I, I stopped putting any more corn here. There is corn just across this path, commercial corn growing and I think the rabbits have plenty of food. Now uh, <laughs> we have many many predators here so <laughs> I just have to green and bear it so it so to speak so this is one of our outdoor cucumbers in fact we only grow outdoor cucumbers so I am gonna uh, try to remove a little bit of the weeds which are here this is not too bad for our allotment and right on the back of this <coughs> uh, cabbage cage is the second one and one of them is Cengilkoi and one of them is Polish Cucumber Śremski. Now these are uh, Sunchokes or Jerusalem Artichokes or whichever name you know them by. Again, on a, on a cool morning I will have to um, open this brassica cage and remove we have some stinging nettles here but predominantly we have broccoli um, and brussels sprouts and flower sprouts here they're doing fine considering they never watered they're doing okay now <clears throat> this is the first apple tree we ever planted here and it's a bramley apple and didn't have any fruit last year so this is its fourth year but it's rewarding us with some fruit this year so I've counted we have five apples here hello you so now we're coming up to the first of the um, asparagus beds and I can say this is the I planted the asparagus last year and we haven't harvested anything this year as you can see the crowns looks very strong and they get still getting new spears um, and again never watered considering we had very little rain in this part of the country um, or our village is, spe <laughs> is a special one um, they're doing fine this is Mirabal um, Mirabal plum and again didn't have any fruit they flower quite early and usually they get frosted off before um, they have chance to flower first of our uh, flower beds 
all the spring flowers finished long ago um, and we have some dahlia coming on. We've planted loads of things here. Now, the problem is we very barely water this bed, so the start of it is going to be a difficult one. A couple of dahlias, a couple of bishops really, I need to deadhead that one. Uh, a couple of bishops um, um, in those pots here and let me just show you how the blackberry look. You know, we don't have yet fruit yet. I know some people have already started harvesting. Um, <clears throat> and this is Tiberi. Um, and we have had some fruit. And I believe we shared quite a lot with the, 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 the birds. Um, but the problem with the birds I have, I don't mind them having some of the fruit. What I do mind, when they land and then pull, and they really break off whole chunk of the plants, so I have to have a word with them. Now, as we come across here, just one more thing I wanted to show you. I've planted um, salsify and scosinera here, and they did start to come up very nicely. I did not realize they are loved by birds, so as you can see, not much left and this is first of our two pear trees there is a little pear on this one first time ever and I think I've seen another one but maybe it's already dropped so if that matures well at least we'll be able to to try it um, however this one which is let me see this one is a Concord it's covered in pears, I will probably need to remove a few, but that's really lovely and it flowered later. It all depends when the plants are flowering. Now, I'm in two minds here, what we're going to do, but these um, yakon are not terribly happy. I might need to put more soil here, but the sunflower seems to be happy, both of them, but the yakon needs watering, we will mortar and we will put some more mulch over it. <sighs> Nothing came very much, look I've planted borage, I've planted and everything is stripped by the rabbits. So I'm gonna give give up for this year, this year only. This is another look at the sand chokes. Okay, let me come back very quickly. You see this is our <laughs> dumping ground and that path existed last year behind there, but it doesn't this year. That's, that's what the whole allotment would look like, probably even bigger, because there is some actually um, fabric laid in the middle. So this is what we're dealing with. This is, you know, um, um, amount of weeds we would normally experience here. So, the rest of this area, well, Let's have a look at if the sweet peas arch was successful. I think it was more successful on the right hand side because the sweet pea sort of grew better, but here I think it was overwhelmed look by the other things. So next year I will be planting here different things like beans, which can establish themselves earlier and they're a little bit tougher than sweet peas still very pretty very pretty you see all the self-seeded um, nasturtium are, are coming out in quite a few places this is not the only one so in here I just uh, did pick the, the um, sweet peas yesterday so it's not as many but they do look lovely and again I might pop a couple of um, a, a, a peas things just to get something else climbing for later on as you can see yes they are coming so what we've got here very interesting so this is my first ever uh, sugar baby melon and I planted it and as you can see it's watered it well and it's gonna get watered again um, well that was a carrot but that's what happens if you put anything that the rabbits like I will put a couple of more courgettes here because as you can see, if I put anything, I would have to fence every single bed. These are 
celeriac and they're bulbing up nicely. So they don't like celeriac, so that's okay. And they also don't like the other cucumber. So that started climbing up the structure Nigel make. I need to take the plastic thing away behind. Okay, and let me just show you my favorite bed because unfortunately I think I really, I'm quite <laughs> swayed towards visual. Um, so this is my, maybe not so productive, but absolutely lovely, a bed of flowering wheat leeks and um, uh, artichokes, globe artichokes, the Artichogia uh, 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 violetta artichokes, and three um, uh, spinach, and there is a little bit behind there, let me just do the close up how beautiful the heads of the artichokes are. Um, and, and we had three heads on the first one, but we already harvested those, so because they came much earlier. They're still coming, you know, how pretty these things are. And then on the other side, we just do still have some uh, Swiss chard. So this is, the next bed is um, asparagus bed. Equally, all the, all the heads are quite um, strong, still coming up with um, with new spears, wonderful. In the last sort of brassica bed on this side, we have white cabbages, we have red cabbages, and when you plant them, they're so far apart, and when they grow, they're so close, and they're not particularly big cabbages. Um, and here, what we've got here, well, we had here some cauliflower but I can see that I've got only four left because the rest has been eaten by snails or slugs well one or the other I, I, I gave it this is my end attempt on cauliflowers this year I think I'm gonna give myself absolution um, in here we have some uh, gooseberries and some black currants I'll be planting some more fruit here because it's fairly shady especially black currants it's okay for them to be shady we will move that pile of dead thing once we sort out the compost heaps and here are the volunteer potato Nicola potato which I planted last Christmas we thought we took as many as we can and we actually didn't what was actually planted here originally was beetroots but just look at them they all been eaten by rabbits so in this in mind we will actually put some wildlife cameras to check what predators we're dealing with and what kind of um, of fencing we need to have to um, avoid this in the future now, this is the second of the little square um, beds with flowers and the aliums are gone over but they look very nice and we've got lots of dahlias coming up here. So that's quite nice and even some of the um, cosmos are coming. But well, look what happens when you can't water your resinias and so on. But that's, I'm afraid, is life. So the herd bed, we just kind of skimmed over that. There is some rosemary, there is some French tarragon, um, perpetual cabbage, marjoram, if I remember it all, some parsley, um, sage, uh, thyme, lemon balm, that's a quite new seedling, so we need to give a bit of time. And now I'm going to the older part of the allotment. And furthermore, I'm going to go into the wilderness. That is my bed. <laughs> okay. 
So let's just have a look what we've got here. We've got, again, volunteer potatoes, but two years ago we had potatoes here. So these could be potentially Aran Pilot or Charlotte. We'll see when we dig them up. Charlotte's got particularly recognizable shape. And the first flowering um, beans here is a French bean. And, you know, this was the only one which first germinated when I first put the... Um, the, the beans and runner beans in. On this side we have runner beans. They seem to um, coming up to climbing up quite to the top. They're not flowering yet um, and there's lots of weeds so my job this morning will be to de-weed this bed. I'm going to leave the lovely calendula that is in there which is self-seeded and you'd be surprised actually how quickly you can weed out um, this sort of space. In here, oh gosh, let me just show you. You know, this is still the same plant of, of, of uh, black, um, 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 not black currant, what am I talking about? Blackberry. And it goes all the way here, all the way here all the way here from that one plant um, which is actually planted on the other side of the horse box so we should have some blackberries this year hopefully um, unless the birds say, say no and again some more raspberries I mean this year definitely we have cleared some space and we will be moving some of the raspberries into the food forest because I need to reclaim this space for more uh, sort of beans for next year. I want to make a permanent bean bed here, but I can't go through the forest like that again. Um, so, these are um, Swiss chard, and I did put some seeds of perpetual spinach, but it's not really happening very much. Um, we do try to water it. And here I planted, I sow direct radicchio. Again, it's just so dry. Let's see what's going to happen. Soft fruit bed. We have actually um, harvested all the gooseberries now and all the red and white currants. But obviously the black currants are still there. Let me just show you. Everybody had a bumper crop this year. And we equally having a bumper crop of blackberries. So uh, these two, three bushes are just like that. So hopefully loads of fruit for freezing. I especially use them for summer pudding. So, um, well, you can make beautiful blackberry jams as well. Okay, so now we are in the old part of the allotment. And let's just pause for a second and have a look at this flower bed. So the towering over are, is um, uh, Verbena bonariensis. And then we have the kind of native uh, verbascums, which come a little bit later after the dusky pink. Um, flowering hyssop, all loved by bees. Some uh, loopings are just finishing. I love these. Uh, alliums are uh, the kind of flower l l sort of in summer and I really need to plant a few more of those. Um, well the drought is not helping even in a perfect spot for the cosmos but we will have to water them again we're watering everything double today. So these are dahlias. These are quite enormous sort of messy looking pink dahlias. Uh, oh, we have one of the re small red ones flowering now. And lots of beautiful Verbena bonariensis. Um, I'm just going to move now back to the um, um, where actually Polytunnel is. I'm not going to be giving you any tour of Polytunnel because that happened last week. Just to show you the stage of, stage of the we have some tomatoes, none of them are ripe, and I have uh, hopefully made a good job on 
clearing let me just have a look at the clearing of these um, sort of um, ends of the tomatoes I took quite big bag this is the second time this week of the of the leaves from the bottom um, and they seem to be looking fairly happy now what we've got in the next bed that is mainly uh, that is mainly um, korabi sorry mixed korabi and and mixed brassica these are the brassicas which my mum sewn and I sort of lovingly looked after and then the snails uh, munched on most of them so we have probably some romanesco here probably some broccoli and the, with the red stems are definitely korabi so that's in this bed then we have um, the bed waiting for putting some um, um, more mosh to in and this is just a bit of coriander seedling as I put it in I mean I'm scared to put stuff in because then you have to water everything otherwise it dies and you're very sad so what we've got here we have some turnips and other brassicas so um, the remind I think I can't remember if I remember if I remember what I've planted here because I have written down somewhere. It's definitely turnip in the middle, but there are also um, kale, quite a bit of kale for winter. So these are my winter kales. <coughs> Fingers crossed. Well, Nigel put directly sown some um, some peas here, and I am not entirely sure if this is will come up. We will persevere with um with um i'm gonna plant some more peas now as the last sowing um and see our bee trap um nothing so far nothing so far i've got two very active beehives they're not active as this at this time i wouldn't be standing here by the way so sort of happily during the daytime because it's their flight path and they come on uh, you know uh, in quite big lots of bees and they're not very happy if they bump into you then you are in trouble but this is calm and quiet uh, morning so the hives are here okay so in the next little bed we've got um, giant white kohlrabi as you can see i do like my kohlrabi and beetroot hopefully with the netting on all the time beetroot doesn't really need it but with the with the netting all the time it will be okay and that big lonely plant is which i harvest all the time it's a single self zone a bit of spinach it provides masses of spinach for us okay so the next bed is a bed which i cleared it was lettuce i put some onion seeds down and i have some more um of these um, um what is it called uh, s uh cutting celery which rabbits ate in the other bed i will plant uh, uh, put them in here this is uh, brown um, fennel and the next one is uh, crimson crush tomatoes outdoor tomatoes and as you can see they are doing well they already have some again I took I think I might take even more leaves out they do have the first tomatoes on them they're looking very strong and lovely and they've you know watered every day so um, hopefully we'll be okay with that um, we'll see what's gonna happen here we have mixture of things planted I quite like sort of mixed polyculture birds uh, so we've got some yin and yang beans here 
few um, few uh, sweet peas. Sorry, not sweet peas. Peas or mosh too. I can't. No, this is actually peas. And then some. Uh, we've planted some. Um, again, very uneven germination. This is um, yellow dwarf bean. On this wall, beside some sunflowers, which again I have to rescue, um, is uh, the autumn fruiting raspberries. So I've got only about four, but they provided so much fruit last year. Um, and the bed of leeks. So again, need, they need more watering, but I just planted them about a couple of weeks ago. So they maybe two, three weeks ago, and they were very tiny, so they're doing okay. That's a, that's a bucket of carrots, and let me just go and spend strawberries, and let me just go to the other side. Hopefully this gives you the idea how this is all done. <laughs> we will be moving next year polytunnel into this space. So I'm not doing anything with this strawberry bed because I'm <laughs> there will be a polytunnel here and there won't be a polytunnel in the other space. So uh, we're, we're letting it sort of be as it is. So this is one of the two eating apples, which I did mention before, that is not doing very well. Just through here, is our sort of compost area don't often show that wood storage all sorts of things um, and um, okay so these are plum trees which have been here a very long time we tr did trim them last year and we will do this year they never have very many fruit and the birds usually help themselves to that anyway so rhubarb we harvested some first time this year some rhubarb um, though the fentons i would say well they're equally sort of red and stuff fentons temporarily early uh, needing some water but in general very nice then we have some more seedlings here these are just spare seedlings we will be putting them out in the gaps and we're coming to the um, squashes and courgettes bed so this is a courgette and I can see it's a Romanesco because of that flower which hasn't started but it's got the courgette behind it so this it, it, quite a few things have been eaten here and these are various squashes, from patipan to Turkish turbans, uchikikuri, uh, Hokkaido, um, early, early uh, nutabat, uh, butternut, sorry, <laughs> early butternut, and so on. A little bit of corn, not looking 100%, but we will again water again and, and see how that progresses. So, it needs a bit of tidy up and some of the lovely dahlias from Sarah Raven and this one I let me just see what one which one was this one this one is I think is some Hopkins some Hopkins very lovely um, and we're gonna go very briefly to the greenhouse because we've done the greenhouse last week but just to show you Okay, so we've got things drying up and we have things drying up in this cabinet as well. Um, but what I would really want to show you is this. The first fruit have set, um, so two on this one, one on this one, two on this one. This is a set fruit, by the way. 
and so is these. These are, you know, the Bonica F1 do, does it later, but it is going. I haven't had the look yet, and I will need to do some um, pollinating of the melon as per um, Bill and Val's instructions in their recent video. Uh, very good. I need to, I need to get going. I think. And here's some peppers. So they're all flowering, all setting fruit like this. Um, uh, what one is it? This is not Padron. This one is. Oh, let me just see. This one is jalapeno because I use lots of jalapenos. Um, and these are the normal sort of red bell peppers. They're flowering and, and setting fruit. This is a yellow long pepper and and so on. Now here, these two cour little courgettes will come out and I will be, will be planting them shortly along that um, these are these were just in case sown very recently if if the snare slugs at the rest of these but we, i will put them out because i can't do anything else in that um, bed and these are peas these are shiraz and sweet horizon which are going to go in um in that bed um which i mentioned with coriander so we're coming to the end of uh, our tour um, I still have things to do. I still haven't sown any parsnip for Christmas or uh, more carrots for Christmas. So these were the blueberries. Again, blueberries like wet. We harvested more this year than the previous year. There is some, still some to harvest, but we had also um, casualty. It is simply too dry. Um, what is doing okay let's have a look at the yellow raspberries well we have one with the fruit so uh, some of these came true i know now this day three four definitely out of ten it's very hot summer i think that's a result because what will happen they will spread and i will let them five five out of ten have survived and next year we should have some yellow raspberries now i also haven't realized that um, oka is favorite of the birds so they basically stripping everything so they have been covered and uh, here we're supposed to be the pumpkin cage you can you can just see how tall the weeds are here they are taller than me at the other end so um we kind of abandoned the idea for this year we, we just because we've been traveling and because we've been not well uh, we've decided that actually we're going to put some make a this year like a fruit cage and put the blueberries and other things here and so on but next year we will revisit the idea and hopefully claim a little bit more of this space so look the lovely bud layer all in a flower has some butterflies on it as well I think that's lovely and I want to keep some of that sort of uh, uh, I can't even get to the pond at the moment so I think I think autumn is going to be big building and preparation thing here um, in a building in a sense that putting the foundations for the next year putting the polytunnel in the new polytunnel in uh, getting that done in readiness for next year getting the pond done there's lots to be done oh gosh look portable loo uh, let's ch let's finish this allotment tour so i think that's sort of mid-summer almost allotment tour july tour and i do hope you enjoy we do, we do those every four weeks just to check how the allotment is changing because the changes are so fast this time of the year and um, I hope to see you next week and I have no idea what yet probably lots of different jobs in July uh, at, uh, um, on the allotment we will be showing whatever is happening here in a kind of diary style so um,